through Julia from our Coas numbers into Illumina's uh, traded price even as we speak uh, falling almost 3% what's the market not liking? This is a traditional reaction that we get. We know that uh, Alcoa and Illumina in, are in a joint venture, the AWAC joint venture, which Al Illumina owns 40% of. And if we have a look at AWAC, AWAC this is actually ungeared, but Illumina has very uh, moderate gearing of about 11%, while uh, Alcoa has a lot higher gearing at around about 60%. And yet it does seem that it is always Illumina which underperforms. If we have a look at the last year, Illumina shares actually down by almost 50%. That's compared to Alcoa shares which are listed in the US which are down by less than 10% and the Alcoa depository receipts which are traded on the ASX which are down by about 19%. So you can see that Illumina is an underperformer. After hours we did see Alcoa shares up by half a percent on the back of the better than expected earnings result coming through. But you can see that the follow through on the Australian share market has been that traditional relationship where Alcoa once again has underperformed and we are seeing quite a significant loss there. We have a look at Alcoa's actual result. We did see a third quarter loss of 15 cents per share. But once you strip out the legal as well as the environmental remediation that we've seen, it actually ends up being a positive figure of about three cents, so beating expectations. But a key problem for both these companies, of course, is the oversupply of aluminium that we are seeing in the market. And this is mainly due to China and uneconomical uh, output coming through. We have a look at prices in terms of aluminium. In August, we saw prices reaching a 34-month low. Now, this is not sustainable, and that's really why we are seeing a very difficult environment uh, for these two companies. I guess in a very difficult environment, Alcoa managing to beat expectations, but really what we need to see over the next 12 months is a cutting that supply to give some support to the price of aluminium and uh, alumina. Julia, there were some comments around China, obviously, in the, the um, Illumina, res uh, sorry, the Alcoa results uh, this morning. Talked about the slowdown being behind the reason that they've actually cut their forecast for aluminium um, demand, basically. Was there anything new or any, any kind of uh, colour commentary around the situation in China that, that markets have uh, jumped onto? I don't think there were any surprises here given that we are seeing weaker manufacturing numbers coming out of China and we have seen a number of bodies coming out to downgrade global growth expectations but I think um, what our Alcoa really concentrated on is some of its higher margin products that go into things like aircraft parts um, so really trying to concentrate on increasing those higher margin uh, products and the sale of those products but we know that China is a key problem both in terms of the supply of aluminium as well as the demand for aluminium and the the demand outside of the equation making it quite difficult at the moment. We did see base metals mostly decreasing on the LME last night so it does look like uh, we will see some downward pressure on our, our Illumina shares but really strong underperformance by Illumina in comparison to Alcoa. Illumina shares, I mean down 46% over the last 52 weeks. That's compared to Alcoa which is traded in New York down by 10% over the last 52 weeks. So there's a huge uh, a gap between the performance of these companies that deal in aluminium as well as alumina and that can't be accounted for uh, by the Aussie dollar. So it does look like uh, the al alumina shares once again underperforming even though our coal shares have actually seen a rise after hours. Let's about Arium. We've kind of discussed iron ore more broadly but um, Arium is an interesting one because they've been reshuffling assets but doing so actually yesterday it would seem while the market had or well, the ASX had the problem publishing the announcements so the shares were, were halted from trading because of that market sensitive situation. Um, what do you think is to flow through today from all that? I think one of the key problems that the market has with Arium is actually the amount of debt that they have on their books, about $2 billion worth of debt, which to put into context is about two times the market capitalization of this company. So it does look like they are selling down some of their assets, a 50.3% stake in Steel and Tube. This is a New Zealand company and this should raise about $75 million and I, I guess this will be used to pay down debt. Now this comes amidst uh, the conditional offer of $0.75 cents coming through from that consortium. Uh, that includes the likes of the Korean steel giant POSCO as well as Noble. But really we have seen a huge uplift in the shares in the last one month, up by 40%. But this is all on the back of takeover speculation. If we don't see that takeover speculation come through, the market's once again going to be focusing in on the fundamentals for Arium. And while we have seen uh, it looking like uh, it's relatively cheap and a potential takeover asset, it's also a higher producer of iron ore and a huge amount of debt 
on its books. So it does look like the sale of some of its assets to help pay off some of that debt. But of course, the key driver of this stock's share price at the moment is our takeover.